All right, guys, so I didn't end up going to a car event. I actually uh, got a call from a buddy of mine. He did some parts uh, from Finish Iron Factory. So I'm um, over here at Sam Sam shop, Goichi Motors, and uh, he's got some really, really cool stuff here in the shop. So we're going to take a look around. What's up, Sam? What's going on? All right, what's going on here? I don't know. This is Sam from Goichi Motors. Yeah, what's going on? What's your name, buddy? Yasiel. Yasiel, what's up, buddy? Nice to meet you. All right, so what do we have, what do we have here? What's uh, this is an S13? Servo LS RX7 FC 1990. Okay, okay. Powered with a sequential transmission. Yeah, we see a lot of people using comp turbos. Most, was, people, most people usually just go straight for the, uh, what do you call it, like Garrett or Precision? Yeah, this one's air cooled, so no oil lines, no cooling lines. Oh, look at that. I think they just have um, Zerk, fitting Zerk fittings, on and I think I've, I've heard that the grease they use is actually like a like a helicopter grease. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's like about 300 bucks a tube or something. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. it's about every. It's been a while. Two to three thousand miles, you gotta grease it. It doesn't use much grease, right? No, it shouldn't take much. Hey, if it's three hundred bucks. Yeah, I'm sure three hundred bucks will go a long way. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not that big to begin with. Yeah, but no oil lines, so you don't gotta worry about the return. Or like, Keeps it nice know. and simple. You don't have to worry about you know, yeah, uh, feed, um, drain. You know, if there is ever an oil failure, uh, failure, it's gonna save the turbo. If for whatever reason, like there's an issue to spin a rod bearing, you don't have to worry about replacing your whole turbocharger or yep. having it rebuilt. So it saves you a lot of headache. Um, it's interesting, they've never had uh, a water cooled version. They've yeah. always been air cooled. Yeah, they, they, they have a water cooled. Oh they, oh, they do have yeah, water cooled. Yeah, there's actually one on the Exo booster right now. Oh, there you go, there you go. This is going to be fun. Those RPF ones. Yeah, it's got, yeah. A, it's got to get some Meister. There you go. FC RX-7. Turbo LS one. Usually, I see the comp turbos being used for um, rear mount setups. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that's greatly simplifies the whole, you know. Yeah, plumbing and all that. Plumbing. Yeah. How to, yeah, all, at that point, all you have to worry about is intake piping. Yeah. yeah if you run those yeah. on the rear, the grease life is a lot longer. I think it's like four thousand miles before you have to grease them. Oh yeah, because there's so much less uh, heat going on. Yeah. And I see this is this ceramic coated. No, it's polished. Oh, just polished. Yep. yep. Oh wow. Are you, oh, is it, is, it, is it a stainless housing? Yeah. There you go. That, that helps. And uh, what else do you guys have going on in the shop? Uh, what's what's this thing here? That is a Exobusa. So basically that kind of like an aerial atom, but it's a company okay. in the UK that builds them. There's a kit car. Is it made by uh, Exoset, just like Miata? No, no, Exobusa is a full separate company, but oh, okay. um, that's going to be the world's fastest Exobusa. We're running a Haltech Nexus, Comp Turbo on that as well, and full ABS, traction control, like active aero front and rear. Like it's going to be, it's going to be a serious little track monster. Look at this thing. Jeez, you got brakes up here. What are these, four piston calipers? Yep. There you so go. I like re-engineering with the, uh, because we're doing water to air, so we got separate cooling systems okay. and the separate water pumps. And that helps. I see you're not running a vented rotor in the front. Or is yeah. It, it, it's just so light, it doesn't really need it? Yeah, it doesn't really. I mean, that's kind of what we're discussing today. That's why this side's off. Um, because we are running, uh, this is an NB Miata ABS module. Mm. So we're instead of running the full like Bosch ABS system that's like 10 grand for ABS. Oh yeah. We're gonna retrofit that. It's a full standard one system. Okay. So we have to figure out how to fit like a tone wheel and the, the sensor and all that stuff on the wheels. So we're gonna switch it all around. Um, and probably switch to like a vented rotor and all that stuff. I mean, there's really no weight to it, but yeah. it just makes sense. Get better caliper, better rotor. That makes sense, yeah. And you can probably get the uh, the Willwood. Yeah. You know. Yeah, dyno calipers, yep. and uh, maybe even run a Miata upright, you know, yep. or, or something, because it's a Miata is a double wishbone suspension, and so is this one. So I imagine adapting it might not even be that hard. And in the back, I guess this is the fuel cell. Yep. There you go. Right behind, right behind you. So yeah, I got full fire suppression for it too. Just, got it. Uh, gotta have. Case, gotta have full fire I mean. suppression just in case some yeah. some BS happens. And I, I imagine this probably has a the the foam padding inside of the fuel yeah, cell, so that's protected. Probably. And then over here, yeah, this full, is a motor. Yeah, high boost a motor. Uh, this is just a factory motor. We're building another one, but it'll be fully built. Uh, okay. Full dry sump system. That's what oh, all wow. this fun stuff is. Uh, you see the comp turbo hanging out over there. That's that's the water cooled one. Since it's, that's uh, a little baby turbo. Yeah, yeah. It should be. It should be five and that one's actually water cooled. There you go. And you're talking, water uh, talking one point three liter, you know. So yeah. It doesn't take much. Just sneak past all this stuff. Oh. All right. And oh man, look at that filter. There you go. Yeah, because you're gonna have all this air running this way, this way, this way. You might as well just keep it right there and in that airflow. 
Yeah, we're probably going to switch because the oil system's kind of janky on this with the dry sump setup. Okay. Uh, we'll probably switch to air cooled on this as well. And just do like a 3D printed scoop or something just to come off the side just to force all the air on the floor. Awesome. Yeah. This looks going to be a lot of fun. This is, this is what you want to see though. What, this thing? So this is Impossible <laughs> RX-7. This is honestly probably the world's most expensive RX-7 in the world. But where is it? It's in right pieces, there. man. Full build. But this is uh, the Holy Grail right there. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. This is like three years into production. Uh, basically, more or less, a full build. Like four hundred. So V twin turbo, HGT sequential behind it. Holy cow! And full dry sump. A full billet, billet, yeah. four rotor. Even, the billet bell housing even the bell housing is billet. Yeah. Like the CNC machine required to machine this must have been massive. Yeah, it's serious, man. Oh yeah. Serious. Billet. Rear wheel driver gonna go to, go all wheel drive. No, rear wheel drive, man. Rob, Rob Dom can keep the keep the all wheel drive stuff. <laughs> Hey, I mean, all-wheel drive is cool, but, I mean, hey, you know. The logistics of making it work, like, it's just... It's yeah, just having to run extra drive shafts, yeah. like, you know, it, this isn't a Subaru. Yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, uh, we'll do a 9-inch rearing on it. Carbon everything, billet everything, titanium yeah. everything. It's got carbon, carbon brakes. Um, so yeah. that way we can you can set up a race between you and uh, Rob Dom and yeah we'll see, you know we'll see how that goes. Rob might get you off the line but you'll catch up to him later on yeah we'll see how much power we can see make how that goes you know actually you, you might be you might have, you also have the weight advantage of not having an entire additional drive system yeah yeah for sure for there's sure. that oh uh, we don't know what it's gonna make so Pac Performance did the mid plates and uh, a lot of the work on Chip Motorsports machines all the rotor housings the rotors this full dry sump cover and actually assembled the motor. Wow. So, Pac Performance, they're flying out um, to tune it and I'll dial it in. Uh, full Motec car. But six, six, six. Yeah, we're kind of. Hey, man, I'll, I'll tune it for you. I'll fire it and make a score. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're, I don't know what it's going to make, man. We'll see. I mean, 1500 minimum is kind of the goal. And then. Let's see where the, Oh, yeah, there's the rotor. Let's check out these rotors. We've got 40 grand in, in brakes on this car. Wow. Uh, wait, this is going on this car? Yeah. Yep. That's what I mean. Everything on wow. this car is top of the line, like best of the best parts. The guys just. Can we get carbon rotors for, rotors for the Miata? Yeah. Can we, can we make that we can happen? I got, we can make I got work. Willwood four pistons, so we can yeah. figure something out. Yeah, we'll make it work. Dude. Yeah, that's like the holy, holy grail build right there, man. This is awesome. I see you have this really, really cool paint job on it, too. It's all covered up to protect it. Yeah, we're keeping this color. It's, um, this it's actually really incredible just how much the color shifts. Yeah, I mean, because usually it's a small shift, not yeah, a big a, shift. A, like a lot of guys do like the wraps and stuff, the similar chameleon, but this is like actual paint. I mean, I think the paint for this car, uh, he bought all just the material. And it was like ten grand just for the just for the paint because it's like it flops so much. Dude, yeah, like, got, usually it's like a small shift in color. This is like it's a it's a completely different color. Like you go there, it's purple. And that way it's orange. Yeah, usually in the morning you open that door and it's just completely purple. Wow. This is going to be a beautiful, beautiful car. Yeah, this guy actually took this car to see in 01 and won Best of Show in, in 01. And okay. he, he bought this car new. He's had it for forever. Wow. But this is like the final rebuild. Uh, keeping it the color, keeping it the same body kit. There's only two of these body kits in the world. Okay. So trying to get it out of the 90s he wants to keep this color and it's a very like fast and furious color you know right let's try to update it do more time attack style a lot more carbon to kind of break it up get some canards in there yeah good stuff yeah he's got carbon hood roof you know hatch i was gonna say like that you know, we did the weave the same on everything so the whole car from the front to back the weaves the same direction i mean a lot of little details this is gonna be a wild wild build yeah so we gotta strip down doing the cage uh hopefully next week just start on that and start rebuilding it really Nice. What are you guys gonna do about the interior? You're gonna continue the paint job into, into the interior. You're gonna um, do something different. We're gonna color match the cage. I think the floor is gonna be like satin black. Just that'll look kinda, cool. Kind of chill it down a little bit. Yeah. You know, what? I think that'll help. You know, make the cage pop yeah. out a little more. Yeah, yeah. It breaks it up. Yeah. yeah. He, he had like full carbon interior panels. I talked him to doing more race inspired. So we got the carbon doors, um, door panels, seats, and then no carpet, none of that stuff. Just down and kind of purpose built. Challenger up there. What's that Nissan? What's going on there? That's a series, man. That's like the scariest car in the shop to drive. But oh, really? K K24. Uh, what is this? A, a Sentra? Yeah. I 
I see I see the wastegate dump tube and the holy yeah this is a hell of a sleeper like it just looks like oh it's just a old like 80s or 90s Nissan or something like you wouldn't think anything of it and then boom thousand horsepower or something yeah, he's pushing like 550 600 on it which okay. is like enough to bend the factory control arms and oh, I'm sure yeah so which is what they're and brake axles left and right so there's yeah. no new axles or from all the control arms there we go it's a nice small turbo should have a quick spool it is it's dumb man like it's instant there's zero turbo lag on this car that's what makes it scary because it comes on so hard it's just oh, yeah. all over the place because at least my Miata like you can kind of anticipate it because yeah. it has a huge like kind of a laggy turbo yeah uh those those quick turbos you go from making like 100 horsepower to 500 and like nothing yeah totally yeah, yeah it's cool because it's, it's uh we did the side skirts on it we did some custom uh BYC side skirts okay here's your aero here from BYC hey and uh, so so kind of updated it a little bit but it's still got that like period correct interior you know? it's yeah it's got the bright the seats the back, bright seats the wood wheels there you go so like for the most part the car is very i like the shifter yeah and that thing very air specific sleeper man 100% yeah, right. Um, sneak past. Yeah, all the crap. It's non stop. Oh, yeah. Non stop. A lot of projects. Yeah. Yeah. Not enough time. Yeah, other than that, we got um, a little EG hatch in the corner, too. Gotta have an EG hatch in the corner. Always. Always, of all course. The way from the UK. What's it doing here from the UK? Yeah, so this is Mark, Mark Burnett from BYC Designs. Okay. Uh, he designs Aero, so like this wing mount system, mm. side screws, the mirrors. Yeah, you got the gurney flap right there. That's a, yeah, this is all his product, so this is his time attack build. Oh, cool. So he raced this car in the UK, um, holds a time attack uh, national championship, and some track records at Cadwell Park for like seven years running. Um, so this is a serious time attack build. Oh, I'm sure. So him and his Dude, wife moved here from the UK, and they, they shipped him over. So the CRX that we built, that's his car too. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is full. You know, I think I met him at, yeah. uh, at a car show not too long ago. Yeah. So we're basically doing a full rebuild. Um, brought it here and realized that the power he was making is not enough power for like US tracks because they're all bigger. You know, UK is yeah. smaller. So that motor back there is what's going in it. So we're doing a. What are we doing here? A little uh, GSR build, full build, turbo. He's an NA guy and we talked him into turbo. So got it, got to have turbo, got to have yeah. turbo. Yeah, it's like a 800 horse capable motor. We'll be pushing like 300 on it. It should be. Should be of course in like March race race fashion it's like blue purple red like colors don't matter of course it just has to work so. just make it work and then figure out colors later there you go gotta get that in there throw a little heat my way disc car very slow yeah that's, that's one of our customers that would always like talk shit on his car <laughs> he come up he, he has an EG hatch as well and like he's night and day, Mark's night and day faster than him. He came up, he's like, what's your time? And like, we just got out there and he was like just doing test laps. He told oh, him yeah. his time, he's like, oh no, your car's slow. American like, racetracks are all like straight lines. Yeah. You know, yeah. like Homestead Speedway is basically four drag races back to back. Yeah. It's like drag race, hairpin, yeah. drag race, hairpin. Oh, totally. You know, and here's got the speed holes. Well, the diffuser down here? Mm, let me see oh. diffuser. Oh, no, actually not. I think. No, yeah, those, those brackets are to hang the diffuser. You got to take it off, I suppose, right? Yeah, no, those are for the alignment. So you mm. do trackside alignment. So we got a bar system. Oh, cool. And test it all. So. Yeah, we're doing full flat floor. Um, big diffuser, probably all fresh air on it too. So it's going to be more competitive for like global time attack and things here in the U.S. What's going on with the RX-7? So last time I saw this car at Cars and Coffee, it was this was a complete car. You finished this car. What's what are you doing now? Yeah, so we, we built this car and in 17 went to SEMA with it in the Autometer booth and it won Best of Show. I remember. Like wires and, I remember. and then, like, uh, we're talking about it was done. Like, running, driving, tuned, finished, nothing wrong with it. And one day we're looking at it and it's like, oh, let's rebuild it, let's do something different. So we cut the front of the car off. I can tell. Yeah. There's and half the car is gone. Yeah, so, like, we did, basically decided, like, where do, you, where do you go from, like, 1200 horse turbo LS? So we're gonna change the turbo system, the intake manifold, and redo everything. But then, like, we figure we go to SEMA and people look at it and be like, "Cool, we changed the intake manifold." Not really see the, the massive change, even though we rebuilt the whole thing. So, oh yeah, we're doing uh, a motor over there, an M120 V12 out of an uh, like S600 Mercedes. Really? Uh, Pagani used it in the Zonda. Okay. So basically, that's what we're doing is building uh, a mini Zonda. And right now it's upside down. Yeah, I designed the oil pan or the oil pan. 
So they don't make parts for these motors, so like the, this. I can imagine. You know, this is like an oil or a AN fitting for the water block of the machine. So we're basically designing like everything on it. Oh, so you kind of have to. Be full dry sump, fill it all up in. Okay. Turbo or naturally aspirated? Do an NA. NA, okay. Yeah, we got an ITV set up that we made for it. So, ooh. We'll try to get like six, 700 horse NA out of it. And we're going to compete with this car too. We do okay. global time attack and like that kind of stuff. So, oh, that, this is going to be a fun, fun car. Yeah, HTT sequential behind this as well. Now, weight wise, being that it's a V12 versus the, uh, the pushrod V8, how does it compare? Because I see here. Uh, well, you did you have a, an aluminum block LS? Yeah, iron block. Iron block yeah. LS, okay. So, so switching here, the weight penalty might not be that much, especially since you're eliminating the turbos and intercoolers and all that. Yeah, I had a 90 mil turbo on the front of the LS, so it was a pretty big turbo. Right, and so that's like 50 pounds on its own. Yeah, so actually the weight, when we roughly calculated it, the weight of the, the LK9 iron block and the turbo system is pretty much the identical weight of this. Wow. So it is a massive motor and it fills up the bay, but I'm probably going to be right around the same of where I was before. So there it shouldn't be too, too crazy. Yeah, because I was thinking like, well, weight distribution wise, because you're going to send all this weight onto the front. Uh, well, you also eliminated a bunch of weight by yeah. doing this whole tube front system. Yeah, and plus the rear's got a solid axle. So the rear's actually an 8.8 uh, four-link solid axle kit. So really? There's, there's some so weight. it's a library axle in the rear? There's some more weight on the back than factory. Oh. So like... Yeah, I, we'll, we'll corner balance it once we get all together, but it shouldn't be that bad. Okay, okay. You know? And whatever it is is what it is. It doesn't really matter. So it's Yeah, I'm sure the it. factory FDR X7 stuff isn't built to handle 1,200 horsepower. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's how we did the deep dish on the back. We looked at the offset of the back. You know, oh, most, wow. rock, most rocket money cars, wide body, you can add some lip, but we actually narrowed the rear end, so that 8.8, so we got like a lot more lip on the back end. Just for comparison, you got any bananas, you can probably put them in there too, but yeah. yeah look at that. It's a whole hand of lip. 14 inch wide wheels. 14 inch wide. What tires are you running? Like three, uh, 355 or something? Yeah, 335? 335 is a little tiny stretch. Yeah, I so see you can probably get 355 out of that, yeah. no problem. Yeah, we had 345s on before and they're, they're perfect. Let's see what it looks like down there. Oh, I'm sure it's a best name. <laughs> oh, I can, see, uh, I can see the fuel tank, but I can't see much else. Yeah. <laughs> And here you got the uh, carbon fiber roof, see, same carbon fiber roof as the RX-7? Yeah, same one, Marsh Composite, so we just cut the hey, roof, back the roof off, bond this one on. We actually kill a ton of weight, like I, I want to measure because... And you take it off the top of the car, so that's even better. Yeah, because you, you, you factor this compared to the steel piece is one thing, but you also have like the sunroof, the glass, the motor, like all the components with the sunroof set up too. These are so. like another 50, 100 pounds. Yeah, probably not that take. much, but yeah, I mean... But maybe like 30, 40 pounds, but still, like it's well, off the top of the, the car. Thing. It's off of this section of yeah. the car, you know? And you're keeping the, uh, the actual structure, the frame intact, yeah. right? Yeah. So you're not losing any structural rigidity, maybe a tiny, tiny bit. Yeah, but, but it's, it's a cage car too. So. Yeah, it's cage, so it doesn't really matter. And honestly, once this is glued down, you're probably going to gain some by just having uh, some stiff carbon fiber in there. All right, so I guess, yeah, that's uh, that's the whole shop. That's it right now, man. It's crazy. So this car, this car, that car, and those two are all potentially going to SEMA next year. So that's why, like. The shop's just a mess because it's literally 24/7 SEMA crunch like right now. Yeah. Awesome. So we'll see. We'll see how things start progressing and what's actually going to make it. But that's the schedule right now. Is... Oh, I'm very excited to go to SEMA next year. Then yeah. I skipped this year mm -hmm. just because I was like, ah, I'm feeling lazy. Yeah, we did too. Man. You know. But yeah. next year, oh, oh, geez. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> it's going to be great. It's going to be fun. We're of course, you got well. finish line factory fittings going on everything. So yeah. yeah. Cool. I think you said this is just for this car, right? Yeah, yeah all that stuff. Star. Jeez, that. The Dash 12, what is what is this being used for? Uh, we got the radiator system on the front, and then we have the water to air system, and then the oil lines. Nice. So the Dash 12, throw the hard lines in the middle, and then All figure right. out the fuel and the rest of the stuff, get some more word from you here pretty soon. Thank you. Thank you. If you need anything, let me know. Yeah, we'll do, man. All right, guys, that concludes this visit over here to uh, Goichi Motors. I'm actually going to start heading over to a uh, buddy's a buddy's house. He's having a, uh, like a barbecue, end of the year barbecue, holiday uh, lunch, dinner thing. So... I'm going to be heading out of there, and I will catch you guys later. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check out finishlinefactory.com for fittings, hoses, all kinds of cool stuff. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.